This is the Great Basin Seasonal Outlook for May through August 2025. This is meteorologist Basil Numerzitsky. Looking at fire activity, um, recent natural fires in the yellow. Normally we'd have new fires in the past 24 hours in the red, but we haven't had much activity in the past five to seven days. It's been a little cooler, humidity has been a little higher, and a lot of areas undergoing green up. But uh, in some of the yellow areas through here, we uh, did have fires of uh, several dozen acres here in uh, southern Nevada, uh, some of the higher elevations of uh, central um, Utah, and even um, about a 600 plus acre fire in some of the grasslands just outside of the Great Salt Lake. So some of that going on, lots of burn projects is normal for this time of year. And overall precipitation the past seven days, uh, fairly wet across western areas. You can see these areas in green are a half inch uh, to locally three quarters of an inch in the darker green through here, much of northern Nevada, parts of Idaho, uh, but staying quite dry in southern and eastern areas. Over the past month, uh, overall temperatures uh, cooler than normal in most areas except uh, the extreme southern parts of um, Nevada and uh, adjacent Arizona Strip areas. And despite the coolness, unusually it's been uh, a fairly dry month in terms of percent of normal precipitation. Um, a lot of weak little uh, storms keeping the cool air in place, but not bringing um, large precipitation events. Most of the precipitation events were, uh, even though frequent, fairly minor in terms of amounts. Now we look at the longer term trend for the entire uh, wet season or cold season from October uh, through the winter and early spring months. And again, the signal of drier than normal conditions um, is shown, especially in the southern uh, third of the geographic area, where a lot of uh, areas were near 50% or so of their normal precipitation. That's quite significant. On the flip side, areas in far northern, northwest Nevada and parts of uh, western Idaho were wetter than normal throughout the winter. And that uh, presents an issue in itself. A lot of these areas are low to mid elevation. So this increases the fine fuel loading. Uh, we'll have to watch that. We'll actually see some graphics on that shortly. Now, about a year ago, we had almost no drought across the entire geographic area. But when you're dry for six to 12 months, uh, that can change things. And so we see the uh, a large area of extreme uh, drought covering southern areas and severe drought expanding northwards as well, even a small pocket of exceptional drought uh, down in far southern Nevada and the Arizona Strip. Another area of drought has been uh, kind of sneaky, but expanding from the northern Rockies southwards. Now, uh, some pockets of uh, moderate drought, even to pockets of severe drought uh, here in western Wyoming, now starting to encroach in eastern Idaho, western Wyoming. We'll see how that uh, goes on through uh, the summer months. Another drought index that we typically use in fire, sometimes even more effective, is the shorter term evaporative demand drought index, known as the eddy or the flash drought. And it's flashing those drought signals over the past five months down in these southern areas through here, uh, not really reflected further up north just yet. Now, this is snowpack going back to the early April time period, which is normally late March to early April is our peak snowpack uh, season. So I tend to focus on that. And most areas near normal, even somewhat above normal, mountains of Idaho, um, as well as some of the higher terrain of the central Idaho mountains, uh, usually um, only about maybe 30% of this area is actually considered higher terrain, but where it is, um, the snowpack was pretty healthy, but it's in our southern areas. There's a sharp drop off in the extreme south. So some of the southern Utah uh, mountains, Dixie National Forest, some mountains outside of Ely and um, Vegas, that's going to be a, a big concern. Now, looking at fuels, um, a couple of things, the experimental fine fuels, uh, uh, fine fuel loading uh, here on the left, uh, because of those drier than normal conditions, not much in the south, although surprisingly here in the Arizona Strip and parts of uh, far southwest Utah, we do have somewhat uh, higher values, but especially in some of those areas that were wetter over the winter in northern Nevada and parts of uh, western uh, um, Idaho and southern Idaho. Now, the um, estimated invasive species coverage also has a big bullseye in parts of northern and northwestern Nevada and into southern Idaho. So those are areas we're going to be focusing on in some of those lower to middle elevations. Another product we started using recently, the Great Basin Rangeland Fire uh, Probability. 
And that shows these higher numbers, these warmer numbers indicate where some of that fine fuel loading, those invasive species um, uh, loading, that's going to play a big role as we get into fire season in some of these areas of northern Nevada and southern um, Idaho. So continuing on through the 10-hour fuel moisture, moistened up in a lot of areas. We had some cooler temperatures, higher humidity, light precip, but enough to moisten things up. The heavier fuels, 100 hours, especially the 1,000 hours, because of that longer-term drought over the winter, we see some of these low values here, 6 to 10%. Those are values typically that we see in, um, so we get into June or July. So that's a little disconcerting in our southern areas. Um, we see that here in the Manti, LaSalle Mountains as well. So what happens from here now is what the weather and the climate will do. So going into May, actually some good news, despite the warmer than normal temperatures, we expect uh, more humidity and somewhat higher than normal precipitation probabilities. Could be some storms tracking across southern areas, but over the west in general. So no big um, problems expected through at least mid-May. And even through the month of May, we see that precipitation uh, above normal in, in a lot of areas through here. So I think uh, May, and this will actually take the edge off into at least early June in a lot of these areas, but we're still, we're concerned about those far southern areas where things have been dry across the entire uh, winter and spring. And then once we get into our core months of June, July, and August, uh, high heat is expected across much of the West and also drier than normal conditions across um, especially central and northern areas. And notice the above normal of the monsoon, because of the coolness that we'll probably see in some of the wetness um, going into May, uh, the monsoon could be a little suppressed and a little delayed as we go into June and early July. So uh, much of it may stay south of our region until we get more towards mid to late July. So this would really um, extend the fire season in some of our southern areas that normally see monsoonal moisture in early July. So we've put all these pieces together and um, no worries for May, but in June, in some of those um, southern higher elevations where the snowpack was low, where the 1,000-hour fuels already are at borderline critical levels, uh, we get into a two-week dry pattern, and we're going to have problems in some of these higher elevations through here. So we've indicated um, above normal fire potential in the Dixie, um, going into parts of the Manti, LaSalle Mountains, and also the Spring Mountains through here. Wouldn't be surprised to see some issues here in um, the southern Ely's area. As we go into July, because of the delayed monsoon, we expect issues to continue through here above normal fire potential in the Dixie and also the Fish Lake National Forest, maybe taking the edge off further south. There could be some higher humidity as the monsoon tries to get going in the middle of the month, but maybe grazing our area. Still concerned about some of the higher terrain in southern Nevada, but a new area where we have that um, higher density of fine fuels and some carryover fuels in northern Nevada and parts of southern Idaho, and also that area of expanding drought in our eastern Idaho mountains in July. Now, as we get into August, uh, the focus shifts northwards. And from uh, northern Nevada into much of Idaho, we do have that concern for um, above normal fire potential. And we'll see that if we look at the national map where it all blends in. The only concerns in May uh, may be further south. But as we get into June, our here's our um, concerns in southern areas blending in with what southwestern um, region is expecting. As we get into July, um, still some issues in our southern higher elevations, at least for the first half of the month. And we see that big issue going on in our northern Nevada, western Idaho areas. Part of the bigger problem where that drought will be expanding in the northern Rockies and the Pacific Northwest. And that even magnifies more as we go into August. This concludes our seasonal outlook. We issue this on the first of every month. Have a great month.